Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're back here at the ski resort, and today, despite the fact that I have not yet completed the mountains, I kind of want to make a start on some of the ski slopes in this mountain. In fact, I've already made a start on one of them over here, and the reason for that is that this was going to be the beginner's ski slope, and it was going to take place on one of the more, I guess, shallow grade mountains over here. So what I thought I would do, instead of building the mountain and then putting the ski slope in afterwards, which is what I plan to do with the rest of this mountain range, I thought I would actually design a slope of the mountain that could be used as one of our ski slopes as part of the mountain as we were building it up. So here we actually have a set of platforms that kind of cascades down one block at a time to make a more shallow slope. And it curves around the edge of the mountain here and we are going to build up sections in the middle to make this still look like a mountain from the outside while making sections of it a little bit more gradual to provide an accessible ski slope. But it's not really going to be a ski slope in this case because skiing isn't really possible in Minecraft and instead we're going to focus on turning it into a sledding slope for boat transport so we can actually use it practically in the game. And as such, I've been doing a few experiments into exactly how we can disguise this thing to make it look like it can be sledded on without actually showing any of the ice that you need to travel fast in boats. Let me give you a quick example here. We've used mechanics like this to our advantage before. The fact that you can slide around very quickly on ice when you're rowing in a boat as though you are kind of skimming across the surface of the ice. And this can be used for rapid transport. We've done ice roads in the nether before, allowing us to access areas with greater speed. Although, you know, it might be roughly as fast as flying with a light. I think it might even be faster if you are using blue ice, which is, of course, a little bit more difficult to get. But the idea is that you can slide around on the surface of ice like this, and this is probably what we're going to use for the sledding slopes in this mountain range if we want this to be a functional ski resort for players. The only problem with this is that ice looks very much like ice. First of all, we're looking at this kind of ice, the transparent ice, or the first stage of ice, I suppose, which is the transparent stuff that melts in high light levels and can potentially turn back into water as a result and we probably don't want to use this kind of ice because chances are if it gets dark up on the mountain we will want to put some torches around there and we don't want the ice to melt flood the ski slope remove a bunch of the snow and detail that we've already put up there so this ice for a start is going to be out of the question the second problem being that you cannot place snow layers down on this ice so it isn't really possible to disguise the ice as a ski slope and that is where the other two types of ice come into play our next option would be packed ice which requires us to put nine ice in a crafting table to get a single block of the stuff and this is non-meltable ice this is ice that is technically speaking a solid block if you put a light source close to it it will not melt which gets it past criteria number one however unfortunately what it lacks is the ability to place snow on top of it and this happens regardless of light level this isn't a light level thing you can put snow on other blocks regardless of whether it's sunny outside or whatever the light level is obviously in high enough block light levels it will melt but skylight doesn't affect that so unfortunately i'm trying to right click on this block of packed ice right now you cannot place snow directly on top of it and while we could of course make a boat path with ice around the sides and you know make it look a little bit more like a bobsledding course of sorts i guess I think it's still going to be nice to maintain the illusion that you can slip and slide down a snowy area. And for that, we need to turn to the most expensive form of ice, unfortunately, but one that I think we should be able to find elsewhere. That is blue ice. Having converted a few stacks of the ice in my inventory into 28 blocks of packed ice, I now need to convert that down into three blocks of blue ice. Yeah, this is really expensive stuff. You can buy it from the Wandering Trader or you can find it out in the iceberg biomes, which is probably where we are going to be getting a bunch of this stuff today if we want to make a ski slope because blue ice has the wonderful property of actually being able to hold snow on top of it and let me quickly confirm for you it's going to be difficult to do if all we have is three blocks of blue ice but i can actually place a boat down 
on top of the snow here and it will act as though we are just gliding on top of the blue ice. The snow does not create any kind of friction here. I'm wondering if that's going to be possible with layers of snow and the problem now is that I may need to make sure they are even layers of snow because if you have any difference in height between the layers then that's still going to create friction but yeah it looks like we are stuck with just the one layer of snow. Okay it looks like the friction kind of takes hold once we have more than a single layer and that's what I was expecting really because a single layer of snow will not actually change the height of a block if you're standing in it so if you look at the F3 information there I am at Y64 right now if I add another snow layer 64.125 it adds one eighth of a block each time you add a second snow layer on top of that first snow layer and then a third and a fourth and a fifth and so on all the way up until you reach the height of a full block so the fact that you sink into snow allows us to put snow on top of the blue ice here and that is going to allow us to disguise our ski slope there as a proper snowy slope. The problem now being I need to go and find myself a lot of blue ice. So let's go out and find an iceberg biome I can take down and hopefully we'll be able to gather enough of the stuff. Hey folks, welcome back. So I was able to gather up almost a full shulker box of blue ice thanks to only two of the icebergs that generate out here, the blue ice icebergs. And <laughs> you can see them kind of off in the distance over there. I didn't actually find all that many of them, but luckily two was enough to collect all of this. A lot of it is from under the surface as well. So thankfully I was able to fend off the drowned and I have a pretty good respiration helmet. But as you can see on my way back to anything resembling a connection to the ski resort base, I fell out of the sky. The elytra I'm wearing got down to one durability and they fell apart and I fell into the water quite conveniently enough right next door to my guardian farm and so hopefully I should be able to head down into the temple here get myself some XP and repair them but that was a stroke of luck. <laughs> Thankfully I was right next door to this thing and it didn't end up costing me too much in terms of travel. I didn't fall out of the sky on land and die. I fell right in the water over here. I was heading for the portal at the time so that was actually kind of perfect and I haven't been back here for a while so hopefully I should be able to repair these elytra quite quickly. Oh there we go and I tell you what there's a reason I don't use that farm very often it's because wow the guardians do a lot of damage to you especially in such large numbers it doesn't help that I didn't have a sweeping edge on my sword right now so I couldn't kill a huge amount of them at once but yeah I had to eat a whole bunch of carrots in order to repair all of the durability there because wow I was taking a lot of damage from guardians that's the reason I mostly use the zombie pigman farm or occasionally my enderman farm if I'm out in the end but anyway enough of that let's get back to the ski resort and let's start building this slope so a little time later back at the slopes I'm ready to start replacing a whole bunch of this area with the blue ice that we've gathered and I'm going to try and do it somewhat sparingly at first just so I can get a feel for how much blue ice I'm going to use on each of these sections but it should all in all be not too bad. I think the slope is going to start here and we can probably find a bunch of different ways down the mountain but I planned this out on a stream while I was building up some of the mountain face here and as you can see it comes down this first set of slopes here and then we have a higher section there and a lower section here, both of which can split off and maybe we can have some trees or like a built up snow drift in the middle to separate the two out a little bit more. We can line the outside of this with detail and then as it goes down into this section here, the two paths recombine and we take a bit of a hairpin turn at the end here. So this is where things might get a little bit hairy if you're traveling down a little fast. We just need to turn around the corner like so and then you come to a much more gentle stop at the bottom of the slope down here, give or take a few zombies who are coming out now that this area is a little darker. And my plan is to re-landscape, kind of reformat this area around here so that there is a simple ski lift. And thanks for the people who gave all of the feedback on the ski lift we built in the previous episode, the one that goes directly vertically upwards. There are a few alternatives to that, one of which, of course, is a simple minecart track leading you up the side of a mountain. And I thought that would look a little bit out of place on this mountain here, but it's something that I think would make a really good addition to the beginner slope, almost as though you've got a T-bar or one of those kind of button lifts that takes you up to the section of a shallower slope that you could just be pulled up instead of having to sit in a gondola or something like that, having to sit in one of those chair lifts that takes you up one of the larger mountains that might be a little larger of a climb. So I think we'll probably format the side of the mountain here so that we can have a minecart 
thing taking us upwards. And we could do more interesting stuff like that with, you know, pistons and having piston assisted transport up here. I've even thought about doing something with honey blocks and having the player pushed up here on a honey block, but stuff like that is a little bit too complex and doesn't seem like it fits with the whole aesthetic of the area. It's a little bit difficult to conceal going up the side of a mountain anyway. So what we're going to do is take out some of this area here. We're going to start off the slope around there and we'll probably flatten out an area up here that's going to be a sort of station for people to strap their skis on and get started and then we're going to kick into this blue ice and have the slope start around here. So let's start building this stuff up and we are eventually going to be covering this over with snow layers and we'll go back into the methods of snow farming in just a second. One other interesting thing to note while I've got a little bit more blue ice here I may as well try and build some of this stuff up is that while boats are not really going to be affected by the inertia that you have when you're traveling over blue ice with two layers of snow players are and I'm not quite sure why that would be the case because if we build up to three or even four layers around here it still happens that way and there seems to be this effect whereby players if they are traveling over something that is not a full block like a slab here for example they actually still get the inertia effect of the ice being below whereas if I travel over a slab here with a boat it's not going to act exactly the same way and the slabs kind of hold up your progress and I don't know why exactly that is the case it's probably something just to do with the way vehicle physics work in the game but unfortunately that means we're not going to be able to use stuff like slabs here as a kind of method of slowing the slope down a little bit we are going to have to move the slope down in full blocks or maybe fill up an area here that is just layers of snow and hope that the inertia that you've already picked up the momentum that you have from traveling over the blue ice here is just going to carry you straight over the top of it on the boat and you're not going to be slowed down too much but that might actually be a really good way of breaking on that hairpin corner as well to make sure that you don't have too much momentum and end up flying off the edge of the mountain into the distance i think that might be a good thing to keep in mind but for now we're going to keep the snow on top of these layers of blue ice one layer thick at this point this is just going to be a lot of work replacing the central sections of these stone platforms with the blue ice as we continue down the slope so i reckon this is something that would probably look good in the form of a time lapse Welcome back folks, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. We have a lovely boat path here splitting off in several directions and also kind of splitting off around that bottom section there. I thought it'd be kind of nice to put in maybe like a little snowbank or some trees or something like that, even though at that point you're slightly at risk of hitting the trees if you end up coming down that slope at full force. But I've discovered that the best way to do some boat sledding in this game is definitely in third person so coming out of that first person view because it's really difficult to see where you're supposed to be steering but with third person seeing over the shoulder it's a lot easier so you actually go pretty fast thanks to the fact that blue ice is really the fastest substance to travel on a boat with but you can sort of make your way down here maybe a little slowly maybe bashing into the walls here and there but once you make 
around this turn. There we go. Yeah, this is probably my worst performance, but you probably saw me trying it out a couple of times in that time lapse if you were looking closely. And we can finally make it down to the bottom of the slope here, where presumably we could walk over with our sled, go up the ski lift and try again. So you might assume that the next step is going to be to cover over all of these blocks of blue ice with the snow layers, but we're actually not going to do that. We're going to save that for the very end, because otherwise, if I start decorating the outside of this section, I am going to have no idea where the blue ice is, and I'll end up piling up snow layers in areas that I actually want to remain part of the boat track. So the idea instead is that we're going to be piling up stuff all the way around the outside, making sure that we can decorate it so it's really obvious which section has only the one set of snow layers on top of it, and that's the stuff we're going to be following on the way down, which is going to mean a lot more decoration around here in the form of layers of snow, snow blocks, probably a few other things as well. I actually had some quartz slabs on me just because I was wondering if the slab effect would work over this blue ice, but I don't think I will use those for the decoration around here because, to be honest, they stand out a little bit. I might bring in a little bit of diorite, though, and probably some dirt and grass and that kind of thing so we can make this into a proper snowy area. And the time lapse is going to continue because I think the best way to show decorating this overall area is going to be in the form of a time lapse as well. So I'm going to grab a few supplies. I'm going to grab some spruce saplings that we can grow up here. And by the end of that, this whole thing is going to look a little bit more like a ski slope. But before we do that, I did promise you folks a quick reminder of how we're going to farm all of the snow that we use for those snow layers. And it's with this guy over here. This is a snow golem trapped in a box where the rain will not affect him if it rains, which it shouldn't do in this biome. It would probably just snow, which wouldn't be a huge problem. But either way, if you have a snow golem trapped anywhere, basically you want to make sure he's got a block over his head so that if it rains or if anything happens like that, you want to make sure that he is safe and secure. So uh, the whole point here is that he's standing on a block that cannot easily be broken with a shovel. Sometimes people set up snow farms and they forget that a dirt block is underneath there. And as soon as they start clicking on the snow layers here, which you can do very, very quickly if you have an efficient shovel, then the, the block underneath it breaks, the whole thing falls down. You end up hitting the snow golem by mistake. But all we're going to do here is stand here with a silk touch shovel, hold down the left click button while looking at this block here. And you're not going to hit the snow golem at all. You're going to be able to pick up all of the snow layers and the snow golem just simply replaces them on the block where he is standing. Now with a silk touch shovel you're going to get snow layers which are perfect for what we want up there for a little bit of detail. If you want to create snow blocks however that is eight snow layers at a time which is really not all that great. So what we want to do is grab the backup gear chest here where I do not have a shovel. So we'll probably try and find a shovel in one of these boxes around here if I don't okay if I don't have a shovel that's fine I can probably just make another one if I needed to look I can make one of those out of an iron ingot here as a very quick example obviously if you ended up breaking the snow layer here with anything other than a silk touch shovel, you end up getting a bunch of snowballs. And Fortune does not affect snow layers like this in any way, so you don't end up getting more snowballs per layer, at least I don't think you do. According to the Minecraft wiki, I wasn't able to find anything anyway. And then four snowballs combined makes you a snow block, and that is going to be much more efficient to do than to put together eight snow layers, probably save you a bit of resources. However, then if you convert snow blocks into snow layers like the recipe for a slab does, you're get six snow layers back for three snow blocks. So really you want to make sure that you are farming the type of snow you want to use for a build. If you want blocks of snow, make sure you start farming snow balls. If you want layers of snow, then you can farm them directly from under the snow golem by using silk touch. Another thing to remember at the time of this recording is that snowballs will only stack up to a maximum of 16 because they are round items. That is actually going to change in a forthcoming update when combat changes. Snowballs are going to stack up to 64, which is not going to mean much in terms of the actual changes to combat, but it's going to be fantastic for builders who want to build with snow blocks, because the problem right now is you can only carry so many of these things in your inventory before your inventory clogs up completely. So what you might want to do in that case is maybe push a hopper minecart into this block so it picks up all of the drops and transfers them down into a hopper below that. Unfortunately, snow golem standing on a hopper will not generate snow layers because the hopper is not a full block like this. So it's kind of important that you set up a collection mechanism in a way that's going to pull all of the drops through through the block that the snow golem is standing on without really affecting that block in any way. But that is my new iron shovel broken. Let me see how many snow blocks I got out of that. 61. Okay, not too bad, but I think we can probably do a little bit better with a decent diamond shovel and probably something that's got unbreaking and mending on it will suit our purposes best. I was able to gather a little bit more snow from the iceberg biome that we saw earlier, so I'll probably use some of that in the process of building this, but I'm going to need a lot of snow layers here. By the way, ended up with 
you know, roughly a third of the shulker box left of blue ice, which is not too bad. We'll probably use that elsewhere on the mountain, but I'm going to spend my time gathering a bunch more snow layers here, and then we're going to continue with the time lapse. Welcome back folks, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and while there is still a little bit of detail to be added and of course an entire <laughs> cliff face over here, it's kind of running out of stone, a little bit embarrassing at this stage in the project, but don't worry, we've got a cobblestone generator. I think this has gone super well. This is kind of the level of detail I want to be applying to all of the mountains in this area, really. I want to have areas of stone and diorite and snow and dirt and trees and all of this kind of stuff. And the trees 
trees are just the generated spruce trees. I've just been planting them as I go and bone milling them. And I really think just having a few of those in this area has really brought the whole thing to life. Now, as I've been doing this, I've come more and more attached to just this river of blue ice that we have here. And I'm actually thinking maybe we'll start mixing in some packed ice and stuff like that in the end and just have these things exposed as ice. Let me know what you think about that in the comments today, actually, because... I'm kind of wondering, we could still use the mechanic of having snow layers over the top of it, but I kind of feel like the blue in amongst all of this grey and the snow layers and the green of the trees and so forth really looks very, very good. I'm actually very keen on that as a look, and I don't know if it's necessarily what I want to go with for the rest of the resort, but for this sledding slope... I really think it adds a certain amount of character to it. It just looks kind of nice and well put together. And it blends in in a way that I was not expecting it to. It actually feels like part of the landscape in a way. And this is Minecraft still. We're going for a kind of cartoonish approach to it. Realism is something that would require a whole lot more time and effort and probably some sort of creative tool, like a, a plug-in like World Edit or something, in order to make these mountains a little bit faster. But I'm really happy with the progress I've put in today, and I couldn't end this video without having a quick go down the slope. So I think we're going to rev up our engines and take this thing for a spin. Now, of course, we are still bumping off occasionally those snow layers on the sides. There we go. We got caught on those a little bit there, but it's it's actually pretty good. Up until this point where we have a little bit of a, uh, a turn through the rock there, and I haven't got around to detailing that section yet, I think the part at the top there, as far as detail goes, is pretty good. And we still need to put in things like the lift, which is going to be taking people up to here, and I think I might modify this mountain a little bit or put some kind of shack built into the side of it. There's some sort of, like, wooden construction that's going to provide a platform for people to walk around and drag their sleds over to the sledding area and of course like I said further down I do need to put in a little bit more detail here and there but this top part up here is exactly the way I want to look at it for a palette test it is absolutely fitting the bill and I hope you guys are enjoying the look of it as well that is all we've got time for in this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide and I hope you've enjoyed today's episode don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys soon take care bye for now